how do we actually handle roll double click, right? Very easy. So typically, if you go into a control, you hit F4 and you get this property one that you go in. If you click this little uh, lightning button, that's the event handlers. It shows you all the events that you can utilize for the control that you have selected. But in this case, we um, we really want a mouse double click. This mouse double click really is at the data grid level. We don't want it at the data grid level. We want it at the data row level. So if we did it here, if we use this, like, let me just show you. I'm just going to say, I, I, I'm handling this mouse double click. I'm just going to say message box show row click, right? Let's run it. Now I'm going to get the employees. Now check this out. If I double click here, I get the message box, right? But if I double click here, it also gives me a message box. I don't want to get that. I don't want the, the, the double click event to execute no, regardless of where we click. I mean, you could even double click the header and it'll do it. So we want it to be when you double click a specific row only, only when a row is clicked. So to do that, let's get rid of this event handler. We don't want that. Go back into the main window. Actually, I'm also gonna, I'm just gonna pin these. So they're at the first, the very first ones that appear. I'm gonna close the new solutions. I'm gonna close that, I'll pin this as well. Okay, so to do that, let's get rid of this. And you'll notice that like when, I, as soon as I went into this property window, Click on the data grid, hit F4. You see how it added the mouse double click event. That, all that really does, it, it adds this mouse double click event attribute to your control in the XAML side. So let's let's subscribe to an event at the data role level. To do that, you're gonna have to add a data grid dot resources element. And then in here, we're gonna add a style. I know it's kind of weird, but this is how you have to do it. And we're gonna, the target type is gonna be data grid row. And now the event setter that we're gonna use is an event called mouse double click. And now the handler that we want to use for this is gonna be a new handler. And now if you hit F12, it takes you directly to there. I'm just gonna repeat that again. So now we have a data grid resource. In the data grid resource, we define the style where, that we're targeting the data grid row. In the, and in the style, we're adding an event setter for the event called mouse double click. The mouse double click event handler is this method name that's right here. Now, when you have the cursor on this value and you hit F12 on your keyboard, it, it'll jump directly to that event in your code in the C sharp side. So now we're good. So let, let's test this. Well, first of all, let's do this. We're just going to say message box.show just like we did before row click we're going to press f5 and run it we're going to get employees now when you double click here you see it doesn't does nothing happens but if i double click one of these rows boom it works if i double click a header nothing happens it's exactly the effect that we want and it is working exactly the way we expect so how do you retrieve when you in this in this mouse double click event how do we retrieve the employee record right that is actually being selected Anyone who's been using C Sharp for a while knows that in C Sharp, most events have this sender object that it's passed into the event. It's usually the, the object that the, this event is linked to. This specific event, data grid row mouse double click, is tied to the data grid, our DGM's data grid, right? And by default, it's passed in as an object. So if you were to copy the sender parameter, and you did a dot, there's re you really just get the standard methods and standard properties for an object of type of object. So we have to actually change this um, if we want actual, um, because really the, the sender is the row. We double clicked on the row. So let's declare a variable called row. And we're going to use the sender as a data grid row. You see, it even gives it to you. See, IntelliSense kind of knows what you're trying to do. And then you can actually convert this row into... This, this you'll see it. So if this row has a property called row dot data context, the data context actually is the object, right? That's linked to the specific row. In this case, it's the employee object. So we're going to actually declare a var and we're just going to say emp equals, and we're going to do row dot data context as employee, just like that. So now this, the row variable gives us uh, a reference to the data row that was clicked. The emp variable gives us a reference to the employee object that's linked to the row or bound to the row, right? So let's prove this. So in this message box that show, I'm just gonna add a dollar sign here so, so we could do interpolation within the string. And we're gonna output the employee row, employee click is, and we're gonna put in here squiggly lines. I'm gonna say emp dot emp name. And we're gonna run this to see what happens, see if it worked. We're gonna retrieve the employees. And now let's double click this Carla, um, Row. We're going to double click on it and boom, you can see this message box that popped open. The employee click is Carla. So that means that we were successful. And in fact, just to prove it, actually, let me just minimize this. I'm going to put a breaking point here, a debugging breakpoint. And I'm going to double click on Marco at this time. And we hit our debug breakpoint. 
And now if I put my mouse over this employee variable and I expand it, number one, you can see right away, it's, it knows it's an employee class. But if I expand it, you can see all the employee properties. So we know that the data context really is the employee object that's linked to the row, right? So let's run that. One thing I want to do real quick, really kind of annoying is number one, I want to center this window in the middle of my screen and I want to make the rows load automatically when I hit get employees. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this employee this count, this employee count gets updated correctly. So uh, number one, let's go into the design service and go up to the top of the uh, XAML class. And we're going to add an event here called, uh, I, I, oh, one other thing here. If you click on the window and press F4, it gives you the property window. And usually you have this little wrench selected. Those are the properties. And then this little lightning button is the events. And it gives you all the events for the, and you can see here, type window for the window. I want to execute the get employees method that we created that retrieves employees from the database when the window loads. So let's look for the the load event loaded. Here it is, the event. So what you can do here is you can just double click and it gives you, you know, number one, if you go into the XAML, you'll see that it added a, a loaded attribute and it set the value to the window underscore loaded. If you click on that and hit F12 on your keyboard, it takes you directly to the event in the C sharp code of the main window. And uh, it, it pretty much adds the event for you, which is kind of cool. So in here, this is the window loaded event. We're going to call it get employees. And let's just test this. Um, what this really should do right now at this point, when you hit F5 or hit the run button, it should just auto load the employees to, to the grid. Perfect. That way I don't have to hit get employees over here. Let's exit this. Now let's go into the window, click on the window inside the XAML, hit F4 to go to the property window, click the wrench so we can see the properties common. And then if you scroll down to, there should be another property called window startup location right here. If you click on this, you should be able to put center of the screen. And you'll notice that it actually edited the XAML when you did that. And let me just, uh, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so it, uh, it's, it's a little more easier to see. And you see window startup location is an attribute that was added to the window element. And the value is given is center screen. So when you run it, now the window pops open in the middle of your screen, which is great. Let's make it so the employee count gets populated. To do that, let's go to the get employees method. And whenever we fetch employees, we're going to basically set that label employees, that text to, by the way, of course you could use data binding to do this. I'm just doing this the easy way for now. Um, and I, I will have further in this series, I will show you how to do proper data binding. So we're, we're actually going to use interpolation in here and we're going to say employees just like that. And, oh, I think it's content. That's what this. Okay. Save that. So anytime this gets executed, instantiates Nuno DB context fetches the employees using any framework, binds the employees list that's returned to the item source, and then updates our label. So let's run that. Boom, there we go. It, number of employees, seven. And when we double click on this, it, double, it gives us the correctly selected row. Now, back to the edit employee screen, this one here that we, we created earlier. We, what we need to do is show this screen when the rows double click, and then we want the employee to be passed into this uh, window. So we have to define the property where we can actually pass in the employee. So to do that, let me just minimize the constructor here. We're going to say public employee. And of course, we're going to have to import the namespace, press control period, enter, and it added data models. And you can see the class turn green. And we're just going to name this employee. So now we have an employee property in here. And now we need a way to actually show this. All windows have a dot show method, but we don't want to use the dot show method in this case. We're going to create our own. So we're going to say create a new public method and we're going to say it's a void. I'm going to call it show employee and we're going to pass in an employee object. Hey, look, it even knows what we want to do. So we have this employee property within this edit employee class. And it knows that when we call show employee, that that's what we want to do. So I'm going to hit tab here because I want employee to equals the employee that's passed into this method. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to set the text box empid.text, right? We're going to set that to, and I'm going to use interpolation here, emp dot, and we're going to say emp name. Actually, we're not going to use this parameter. We're going to use our property, just like that, employee.empid. I'm going to copy this line, paste it four times because we have four properties. I'm going to change this to tbx emp name, tbx email, tbx phone, like that. And then we're, from the actual employee object, we're going to pull in emp name. We're going to pull email and then we're going to pull m phone. Okay, save that. 
and then you could do this dot if you want. You don't actually have to do this dot, but you, what we want to do is actually call the show method within this within this show employee method. That's a built-in method into the the window class of WPF. Um, again, so you don't really need to use this because it it automatically knows that this method is built in. If I hit F12 in here, it takes me to this. If you look here, this is actually the window class that's in System Windows, and within here, show is actually a method that that's attached to it. So let's save this 